Hi guys, welcome to this Django Crash Course. So the main purpose of this video is to obviously introduce you to Django and show you the basic concepts you need to get started working with Django. Just to show you what Django is and to understand how it works. I also want to show you guys that I have my own YouTube channel at Code with Tommy where I teach more about Python, Django and web development in general. So you can go there and check it out, check out the videos and I also appreciate if you subscribe. So guys, before we get into this video, I want to tell you to go subscribe to my newsletter on my website. So once you subscribe, you're going to get my Python ebook for free. And then you can subscribe from this link. It's going to be in the description below. So having that said, let's get straight into this video. So guys, before we get started with today's tutorial, I just want to quickly give you a brief explanation of what Django is. So Django is a web framework built with Python, which means that you can use Django to build web applications using the Python programming language. So Django supports both front-end and back-end functionality, which makes it very good for building full-stack web applications. And it also has some built-in features like user authentication, um, databases, and some other things I'm going to talk about later in the video. So having that said, let's dive straight into the tutorial. So whenever you're working with Django, the first thing you need to do is to install Django on your computer. So we're just going to come down here in, I open my um, command prompt right here, my command prompt. I just need to make sure I'm on the folder in which I want to create my Django project. So before creating the Django project, we need to make sure that we have Django installed. And since Django is a Python library, we can easily install Django by typing pip install Django. So now this command line is going to install Django for us, but I already have Django installed, so it's going to tell me requirements already satisfied. But if you don't have Django installed, you should go ahead, download that, and then install it. So as you can see, it says requirement already satisfied. So let me just close that up quickly. So now that we know that we have Django installed, the next thing we want to do is to create a Django app. So we're just going to say Django hyphen admin start project and we're going to say my site so what this command line does is that it creates a new django project and names it my site so django admin start project is the command line to create a new django project and then after that what's going to come next is the name of the project you are creating let's say you're working on a chat system or you are building an e-commerce application you can say django admin start project e-commerce site anything this my site can be replaced with the name of the project you are building. So now you see it didn't show us anything, but if I go into this file directory right here, I'm going to see that a new folder named my site has been created. And once I open it up, I'm going to see that it has these files there. So these are the default Django files that are automatically brought there whenever you create a new Django project. So now let's go back to the command prompt. Let's just go into my site folder and once i press dir i see manage.py and then my site folder so let me just quickly explain what all these files are so here in this manage.py file it's just the file that runs everything in your django project let's say you want to run your app on your local host you want to do some migrations to your database or you want to create an admin interface this manage.py does everything for you now, you don't need to understand everything I'm talking about now. Later in the tutorial, you're going to get it. So right here in my site, all these files are also needed when you're building your Django project. Settings.py used for configuring some things like your database, installing your apps, URLs for making URLs routine. And let's just dive straight into this tutorial. So now that we have this, we can just come into our Visual Studio code, click on Open Folder, and then we want to open up that folder so i'm just gonna go into that folder which i think i named yes my site and select folder so it's going to open up here in visual studio code and we're going to start with the tutorial so now we can see that the folder has been created and then it has these django files so now after creating a django project the next thing we want to do is to create a Django app. 
So I'm sure you'll be like, um, we just created a project. Why do we need to create an app? So it's always recommended to create an app, mostly when you're building, um, let's say large projects, like let's say you're building a social media. The main project is the name of that your social media. Then let's say an app can be different sections in that your project. Like if this instead of my site, let's say it's named social media. Then under it, you can have an app for the chat system. You can also have another app just for the notifications or different things. So an app is basically just a section of that your project. Now for us to create a Django app, we need to go back into our terminal or our command line interface. Right here, we need to make sure we're in this money.py folder. So wherever the money.py file is, that is the root directory of your Django project. So since we know we are in here, what we just want to do now is to create a Django app. And we can simply do that by saying Django admin start app. Now the only difference within this and this command line is just start project and start app. When you are starting a new project, you say start project. Once it's a new app, you say start app. Then we will say the name of the app. Let's say the name of the app now is um I just give it anything like my app. So as I've explained, the name of the app is basically what you want to do in your project. So now once I press DIR again, I'm going to see a new folder has been created named my app. If I come back here, now you can see we have a new folder named my app. It also have its own files. You're going to understand these files later in the video. So now that we have all these things set up, what we want to do now is showing you the main features in Django. So the first thing I want to do is to run our project and see what it looks like. So I'm just going to open up my terminal here in Visual Studio Code so I don't need to go to command prompt all the time. So um, it's opening up. Um, you should give it a second. So that's done. Now when we want to run our Django project on let's say our local browser, what we're just going to type is python manage.py run server. Now this command line only is going to run this our uh, project on our browser so we can see what we are building. Now you can see it says starting deployment server at localhost 8000 which is 127.0.01 I am column 8000. So now once we, we can just copy this and then we're going to go into our browser and paste it. So that's our localhost. As you can see, it says the install works successfully. Congratulations. Now, this is the default Django template that shows when you create a new project and everything is working successfully. But we don't want to show this to our user. Let's say we're building a site. This is not what we want to show to our user. We want to show our user our own project, our own front end, our own design. So we can do that using URL routing. Let's go back into Visual Studio Code. So let me just close up this terminal. Right here in Visual Studio Code, what we're just going to do is to make URLs. So URL routing is used for specifying different URLs in, in your project. Let me come back to the browser and explain in further details. So let's say I go to youtube.com slash code with Tommy. Now you can see that there is youtube.com only. And then we can also go to youtube.com slash code with Tommy like this. Now, those are two different URLs. The first one is the URL to the home page, which is without any external addition. While slash code with Tommy, as you can see, is also another URL in this YouTuber. So I'm sure you get the concept of what URLs are. For us to do this in our project, let's say um, our project is www.mysite.com slash my app slash notification slash anything you want we will configure all these things using url routing so let's just dive straight into visual studio code and do this so the first thing we need to do is to come into our project folder which is my site and then what we just want to do is to come into urls.py file so right here we can configure our urls here but it's mostly recommended to configure it in your app. I like doing that personally. You can configure it anywhere. But just follow these steps now for beginning in Django. 
So right here in my app folder, you see that it doesn't have a URL or py file. We need to create that manually. So we're just going to click on create file, say urls.py. We can close this. Now we have a new file right here in our app. Let's quickly minimize that. What we need to do now is to just say from django.urls import path. Now this is from Django, which will allow us to specify URLs. After importing path, we're going to say URL patterns will be equals to a list. Now this list is going to be the list of URLs that are going to be present in our project. So now let's say path. This is to specify a new URL. Now once I just do something, um, what are this called? I think this is called. Uh, once I put this sign and in the middle is blank, that is specifying the home page. So I'm going to say views dot. Let me say home and name equals home. So what this is is this is specifying for the home URL. If it's slash notification, we're going to do something like slash notification. Or we can just write notification. Anyhow you like it, everything is fine. So once we do something like this, it's going to, that means we're specifying for slash notification. But once it's blank, like the way it is now, this is for the home page. That means when someone just comes to www.mysite.com, this is what this specifies. So we're saying that once the user comes to this URL, you should go to views.home. Now, where is views.home? Views.home is going to be a function in this our uh, views.py. So obviously, we're going to need to import this views.py here for us to be able to use it. And we're going to do that in a second. So let's just come to this name. Now, this name is very important so that when in your template file, that's in your HTML file, when you want to go into different, uh, let's say different, pages with your hyperlinks and stuff like that we are going to use this name as a reference to this url let's just say this name is a particular identification for this url now what we just need to do is to make sure that we first of all have views imported so we'll say from these import views that means from this folder import views now we need to come into views and then create a new function named home so this is how to create a Python function and then needs to take a request and then we can just send an HTTP response. So we're going to import it from Django. We're going to say from Django.http import HTTP response like this. Now what this is going to do, we can use it to send an HTTP response. I'm going to show you in a minute. So what we're just going to do now is to say return. And then we're going to return an HTTP response saying HTTP response. In the brackets, we're going to specify an HTML tag, anything, just HTML. So we can say an H1. Let's also make sure we close that. And we can say welcome. Now, once I save this and make sure that I save this and I come back to my page and hit refresh, you can see now nothing changes. And why is that? That's because all this URL we did, the URL routing, we only did it in our app. But we need to also do that in our project. So our main project will recognize it. So we're going to come right here. What we're going to do is not the same thing. In this URL.py file, from our project i'm first of all going to import include now this include is going to allow us to include a url from our app so i'm just going to specify the same thing that means once a user comes to the home what should happen is that it should include the urls of my app dot urls like this so once a user comes to the home it's going to go to my app dot urls which is this look for the home and then render this url and then once it wants to render this url it's going to go into the views.home views.home is this this home function and it's going to send an http response so let's check it out now once i refresh 
you can see now that I have welcome. Now this is how to basically send a simple HTTP response in Django. Let's go back. We can um, type anything and um, let's say we want to have another P tag and saying I. Let's close it. You can save it. Come here, refresh. Now you see that we have I. So we can basically edit HTML in here. But as you know, this wouldn't make sense when you are building a real project, like a real large project. So what we need to do for that is to add our template file. And when I mean our template file, I mean our HTML file. So instead of just returning this HTTP response, we want to render an HTML page. Let's say home.html or index.html. For us to do this, we're going to come into our root directory. Let me just close this up. And then in our root directory, I'm going to create a new folder this time around. I'm going to name it templates. Now, this template folder is where all my HTML files are going to be located. So in here, I can just create a new file and name it, let me say, home.html. Now, here, I can type in my HTML or anything I want. Let me just leave that blank for now. But if I just, let's say, put in my HTML here and come back and refresh. It's obviously not going to see it. We need to do something. Now, for us, for Django to know where all our HTML files are located, we need to tell Django where it is. So we're going to come into my site folder, open up settings.py. The first thing you need to do is to make sure that you import OS. Now, sometimes Django have this imported um, automatically, but if you don't see it here, just import it. Once we have this imported, we're going to come down into templates and we're going to look for theirs. So now that we see theirs, what we just want to search, what we just want to type in here is base there, like this, slash templates. So instead of slash here, it's going to be comma something like this. Let's save it. So right now, Django knows where our template is located. What we just need to do is to come into our views. Instead of um, returning an HTTP response, we're going to render an HTML page. So we'll say render home.html. Now Django knows where to look for this home.html, which is a template folder. So let's come back and then hit refresh. Okay, now it gives us an error. It says um, template name. So this is on line six. This simply means he's not seeing this template. That's because the syntax here is incorrect. So return render. Then we need to add requests, something like this. Now this is showing that is requesting for this page. Let's just go back and hit refresh. Now as you can see, it's completely blank. This is because in our home.html, we have nothing there. But let's make some changes and do something like, um, let's say h1. And let's say welcome to home. Once we save it, come here, refresh. We can see welcome to home. So right here in our home.html, we can do more things. Now, we've done this. Let me show you how to specify another URL. Now, right, we don't need this my site again. What we just need is this URL. I only showed you how to specify URL for the home page. Let me show you how to specify another URL. So I'm just going to copy paste this. Since it's a list, we need to add comma. And then right here, I'm just going to do something like slash. Let me say slash um ball, just a random thing. Then it should look for views.ball and the name should be ball. Now, right here in the views, we also need to create a new function named ball. Take a request and then we can also return. Let's just return an HTTP response for now. And let's just say this is ball page and let's save this come into our URLs and also save this 
So now once we come to our uh, project, I'm going to slash ball and hit enter. You can see it says um, page not found slash ball. So once we come here, the problem is from here. So let's hit slash and then come here and refresh. Okay, so it says um, page not found. So we're going to debug where the error is coming from. Um, B A L L slash B A L L. Okay, so let's see. It will be registered here. So you can see that it's having slash ball right here. But when we go to slash ball, it doesn't work. So let's see. The current path ball didn't match any of these. Okay. Let's come back here now. Let's eat something like. Let's just eat another word. I come refresh. Okay, now you can see that it shows. So the reason why it's not showing for slash ball is still weird, but let's try. I change that and let's see. And it refresh. Okay, now as you guys can see it's working when we go to slash ball. So sometimes you might just fall into some errors like that. But debugging it is actually a very important and crucial part in your programming journey. So now we slash ball is working again. So that was just a weird error, but we fixed it. So now I can go to the home. And then I can also go to slash ball. We can see the two pages. And right in the home, I can also make a link which is will take me to ball. So I can do something like an H2. And I can say click. And right here, I can do this and say F. And then I want this to take me to ball. So I'm just going to say ball like this. I'm going to say yeah. To go to ball. Let me just leave a space here. So once I save this and come back to the home. Click here to go to ball. Once I click on here, you see it takes me to the ball page. So that's how to navigate through your URLs. So now that we have the URL sorted out, the next thing we need to do is to make sure that we know how to send data from the views to the HTML or the template. Let me explain that in detail. So we have this view here in the home page. So let's say we want to, we have a variable, a Python variable and its name. So let's say this name is something like, let's just give it a random name like John. So I can pass this name variable into this home.html and this is going to collect it. And you can say, welcome John or something like that. So let's do that. So once I have this variable, for me to send it into this home.html, I'm just going to put a comma. Call the braces and let me say name should be name, which is this variable. Now I can easily save that. When I come here, I can just say welcome. And for me to collect that, you can see that the name is name. So I'm just going to use a ginger format. And I'm going to say name. Now for now, this is just the basic way of collecting variables from your views to your template in Django. So instead of it saying name, once you put these two curly braces, Django recognizes as a variable. So it's automatically going to look for the name of the variable from the views and then say that variable, the value of that variable. Now once I go to home, so you see it says welcome John. It doesn't say welcome name with these curly braces. Now that's how it is done. And I can also make it more fun, you know, by telling them to input let me something like your name. You say input a name in a form, and then I'm just gonna send it to the slash ball page saying your name is this. So let's just basically do that. So right here, I can just say form. 
and in the form i want to make it give it an input let's give it an input type text and we need to have a name let's say a name of name and then place order of input name and then let's just close that put a br and then another input for the submit button submit i think this is fine close it and now this form i want it to go to the ball page so i'm just going to say ball like this very easy and then that is what we need so once uh, i also want to use a post method now i can use a get method the difference between a post method and a get method is that a post method is more secure now when i use a get method it's going to show me whatever i'm passing in the url let me show you explain that in detail so once I come here and I go to, let's say, Google, right here in Google, if I search for, let's say, code with Tommy, you can see that search, if I look in here, you can see that it's passing this query equals to code with Tommy in the URL bar. So whatever I'm inputting in this input, is being shown in the url and if you are using a post method it's not going to be shown in the url what is just going to be shown is slash search like this slash search it's not going to show the rest that's right between a post and a get so a post is very more secure let's just close this up quickly a post is more secure let's say when you are using authentication let's say when you want to log a user in you don't want to show the person's username and password in the url bar or let's say when you are paying with a credit card, you are shopping online. You don't want to show those kind of details in the URL bar. So there, we use a post method. So if you want to use a get method, this is how to use a get method. Once you just hit submit, is a get method automatically. But I want to show you how to use a post method in Django, specifically in Django. So for me to do that, I have to specify method and I have to say post. So if I don't specify this method, let's say it's just blank like this, it's automatically going to use get. When I want to use post, I specify that. And then whenever I'm using post in Django, I need to add something called CSRF token. Underscore token like this. This is just to make sure our data is secure and it can't be stolen. And once I save this, I come back here. It says input name and submit. So let me input a random okay henry and i hit submit you see it just comes to this ball nothing is done with that data now what we want to do is since we are sending this into the ball we want to collect it in this ball view and send it to an html page called ball.html and just show that your name is whatever the user input so we're going to say if request dot method is equals to post that's if we're using a post method we're just gonna say name should be equals to um request okay request dot post name so now that we have whatever the user inputted and saved it in this name variable what we just need to do is to pass it back into the template so we need to create a new template here and name it ball.html. That's a weird name, but just for tutorial purposes. So right here, I'm just going to copy this up and then paste it here. So return render by rendering the ball page. And then we're also passing this name variable back to this ball page as this name variable, if that makes sense to you. Now we can save this come into ball and we can say h1 your name is name so now let's test this out let's go back to the home page 
let's input a name of team once i hit submit you see it says your name is team let's go back and try with another one let's say timo t um i spelled that wrong but let's go so it says your name is timo so whatever you input it takes that now this is the basic concept that is being used let's say once you are signing up this is just how you're going to input your username your whatever you want to input once you hit submit you're just going to take those data and save it in the database so now that we know how to do all this concept which is really good what i just want to show you guys is how to include static files so what are static files i'm sure if you guys are familiar with html you know that you can't build a website alone with html you need your css and to make it more interactive you need your javascript so but how are we going to include all these right here in our project now that's what is called static file all those css and images javascript any external file you're going to be adding into your html file is a static file in django so how will we really let django know where to look for this static file it's pretty similar to what we did in the template file so we can close this up and then right in the root directory i'm now going to create a new folder and just name it static so here in this static any external file i need has to be here so now let me create a new file in there and name it home.css so now this css i'm gonna to have to link into this home.html so i can design some stuff okay but if i just do this and just do the normal let's say linking it's not gonna work i promise you that so we need to come into settings.py and then we're going to scroll all the way down so down here is where we're going to do all the main work so what we just need to do is to specify it the way we specify the template file and that is very easy we're just going to say in letter static files underscore there's should be equals to now we're gonna need os dot path dot join base underscore there comma static like this and then right here we can just put a not here right here we can just put a comma now that we have this done we can now come in here and then include this home.css so you know that we have an h1 yeah let's just do a basic stuff h1 and then let's just say color let's give it a color of red just to know that we have some styling in here so right here in home you know we have to also link that the normal way but we can't link it the normal way i'm gonna link it the normal way first and then show you what it gives us so you know the normal way we um link css files into our html so in an add tag i'm gonna say link rel style sheet f and let me say it's home.css home oh no yeah home.css and then i can close it like this but now when i save this and come here we can see that welcome john is still black but right here in my home.css i said it should be red why that's because we can link external files the way we do in our normal html project django has its way of doing it for us to do this we first need to load something into our template file in this format two curly braces two percentage sign and say load static so now this is going to help us to load all the static files present in this static folder since we load static right here in our earth the way we do it we're gonna say curly braces static space 
one I think um, this and then percentage and close that now once we save this and come back and refresh okay now we see that it is still black okay so this is an h1 and this is an h1 so we are obviously wrong somewhere and where we are wrong is in linking this so we need to add our percentage right here that is where the problem is so let me just quickly refresh curly braces percentage space then static then space then we're going to put one of these in there is where the static file the name of the static file is going to go so which is home.css and then we're also going to close it using this now once we save it and go back it has to be red now you can see welcome john is red so that's how we can bring in external files into our html we can also do it for images javascript any other thing so now that we have this done what i want to introduce you guys to is the django admin panel so django has this really cool stuff which i use called the admin panel which allows you to maintain your site your database anything on your site from this built-in admin panel so you don't need to start building in your own admin interface from scratch you know they already have that for you and what we just need to do is to go to our site slash admin now once we come here this is the admin panel for this our project but it's saying we should log in this is done for the security of our site because when we host our site we don't want any random user to just go there go to slash admin and then have access to all our database that would be risky so us as the developer will be able to create a specific admin login details right here in our console now let's do that i'm just gonna bring up my command line let me delete this terminal so this is the terminal that is running the project let me create a new one and then for me to create a new login i'm just gonna say python manage.py create super user now in django an admin user is called super user but as you can see it gives me this error says no such table as auth user okay now this is getting a little bit more above the basics so we need to do something called migrate so django automatically has all this database for users so that we don't need to start creating new database so when we want to authenticate a user sign a user or register a user it automatically have those database for users groups and all those kind of stuff but we need to migrate this database all these models i would say into our database we are going to get it in like five minutes let's just do it so it's a two-way step we need to first say python manage.py make migrations so for now there's no changes you're going to understand soon but let's just make python manage.py migrate now this is going to migrate everything as you can see the auth the admin the content so because we haven't done this that's why it gave us an error but now we can bring back this our command line once we say python manage.py create super user you can see now it tells us to create a, a, a new user it says username let me give it admin it says email address let me give it admin at g.com it says password now let me just give it a password like this now since super is created successfully i can now use these credentials which i just did to log in here so let's try that admin password enter now it's going to log me into the site boom now you can see that i'm in this site if i come to users or the users i have created are going to be right here you can see that i just created a new user a super user but it's still a user under our site it's now under this database under this table so now that we have that done that we've created the admin panel the next thing and maybe the last thing for this video is to show you guys or introduce you guys to django models so django models what are django models django models i'll say they are like 
tables in a database so once we come here you can see here we have this database we have two tables for now the first one is the user which has username email first name last name and staff status we have group nothing for now but what i want to say is this is a django model so this is a django model named users it's very very similar to um, a database but it has an higher advantage because you can connect with your database delete updates perform any crud operations without even writing an sql code that's why django is very unique and special so this is let's say database table it's also a model django model which has this field admin and all these email address so let's classify this as a django model with this field but now i'm going to show you how to create your own django model this is the default django model that comes in with your django project but let's say you want to have a new django model for let's say the posts let's say you have been in a social media you want to have a new django model or a new database table for all the posts a user has done uh let's just say for a product or anything let's just come to home now let me show you how to create that from scratch i'm going to come into my app in models.py file this is what we're looking for you know how to um to just write a simple python class that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna say class let's give it a new um let's say a new model and let's name it product and then for it to be a model we have to say models dot model now let me use this to reference as i'm coding so this product is basically equivalent to these users so it's the name of the django model but what i want to do now is to specify each table or each row so that i'll know how many fields is going to be there so the first thing is name or let me say title of the product then i'm going to say models dot character field char field it means character field so we're specifying that this is a string yeah a character field Right here, you can see that this admin is obviously a character field. This is an email field. This is a character field, character field, and this is a Boolean field. So just the um, data types in Python are equivalent to fields in Django. And then it needs to have an attribute. That attribute is going to be max underscore length. So this is going to say the maximum amount of letters that can be or words or just the maximum amount of letters that can be in this field let's give it a thousand so the title must not be more than a thousand letters now let's give it another one let's do something like um price now the price of this product should be let's cancel all this an integer field an integer field doesn't need to take any attributes so does this um, let's see what again I think for now let's just stick with these two and let's say owner so the owner of this product should be a character field for now let's stick with these three so we've created this product is the name title price owner are the rows but once we come to home we don't see it there why that's because we haven't migrated it into this database as i did earlier now i hope it's making sense now when we did um let me quickly scroll up a little bit remember when we did python manual.py migrates and we also before that we did python manual.py make migrations so these two steps are gonna make all these changes we did are gonna take it and then put it in our database but before we do that we need to make sure that once ever you create a Django app, you can see we created my app earlier in this video. We need to make sure that in our settings.py, we scroll up, up again. In installed apps, we have that installed as the app. So we say my app. Very important. If we don't do this, we're not going to be able to migrate our model right here into our database. So let's do that now. So right here, we'll say Python manage.py make migrations nice okay it says product.owner character field 
must define a max length attribute so if you guys are spotted we add an error because we didn't specify max length so as i said whenever you're working with character field you need to add max length or if an integer field you don't need to so i'm not going to dive into all the fields we have in this video but you can also learn that on youtube just or with the django documentation anyway so now we can run this okay let's first make sure we save this and we can run this again so it shouldn't give us any error because we have everything right so it says migrations for my app which is this app because this models of py file is under this app so it says create model product good and now we can migrate so python money.py migrate so it's migrated it into our database but if we still come here and hit refresh it still doesn't show why one more step we can cancel this now what we need to do is to open admin.py file now this file is what controls everything that we see on this page so now for, for us to add that model we created into this admin page we need to register it here and before we can do that first of all okay let's register it so we're going to say admin dot site dot register and then we need to register that model but before we can register that model we need to import that model say from dot models or do we want to import the product model so now that we have this product model imported we can just register it we hit save we come here and refresh boom you see now that we have products and once we click on product for now we don't have any product let me add a new product the title of the product is ball the price let's give it 120 um i think the price would have been bet okay let's give it 120 like that and the owner is the admin something like this and once we save this you can see we have project product object one with these details now let's add another let's add another one and let's say basketball basketball i don't know if this is too high but let's go for it and let's say this one is owned by admin 2 the second admin now we have these two things you know what we want to do now we want to get all this data in our database and then show it right here in our html page so like under this welcome john i can cancel all this or remove all these and then just show everything we have in this database i think it's very cool so for us to do this very very easy we come into our views the way we imported that model in our admin we need to do the same say from dot models import products and then here in our home we're just gonna say product with an s equals to product dot object dot all now what this does is that this product model is going to get all the objects in it so in django once we have a new field or a new data we call it object so as you can see it says product object one product object two so i say product dot object dot all which means get all the objects we have here every single thing and then save it in this products variable now you know how we pass this variable we're going to do the same thing so i don't think we need this variable let's just pass it into our html and then right here in we're looking for home.html um yes so we don't need this let's just say welcome and then right under here let's have a new div tag and in the new div tag there's have an h3 and then we're gonna say we're gonna use a for loop now let me explain something in detail so remember as i said it's gonna get all the object and save it in this product variable but it's gonna save it as what data type it's gonna save it as a list data type so i know when is a list or a dictionary or something like that we need to use a for loop to loop through all the values in it so we're gonna say for 
something like this this is how to use a for loop in django say for product in products and then we'll say product dot title so what this is going to do is that for all the products in this products model it's going to just return all the product dot title so it's not just going to say all of this it's just going to say basketball and it's going to say ball just the title which we want it to return and after doing that we need to end for loop you know in normal python we don't end for loop we just use the syntax and indentation to know when our for loop is ended but we don't have that in html so we need to say end for that's how to do it we hit refresh we come back here once we refresh it now you see we have ball and we have basketball if i come here and add a new product and let me say um, tennis or racket no, let me say tennis <laughs> ball and let me give it a price of 20 and let me say the owner is admin 3 so once i save it it says product 3 was added successfully and i come here and refresh you can see now that we have that added now that's very good that's what we want we want everything our database to show here so i hope that i have been able to introduce you to django and show you the basic features basic concept what django is about if you really enjoyed this video please don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe having that said thank you so much for watching and bye for now